The whims and fancies of billionaires and their perverted hobbies have often been a subject of interest in the horror genre. Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities brings such a story to life in the seventh episode titled The Viewing. Keeping it in line with most other episodes, this one also explores the fear of unknown and otherworldly entities, and the Lovecraftian creature in the climactic moments is the icing on the cake. In this video, we will bring you a breakdown of the entire episode, and we will also try to explore some of the theories around the creature. Do tread carefully, because there will be a few spoilers ahead. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request from you. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. It's a very small click for you, but for us, it means a whole heck of a lot. So, let's get into it. Exploring the plot, curiosity can have dire consequences. Like all the other episodes in the series, the viewing starts off with Guillermo del Toro being the host. He talks about situations where the collector becomes the collected, and he also sets up the premise nicely. The story is set in the year 1979, and the first scene gives us a glimpse of an invitation card. The card reads, Lionel Lassiter requests your presence for a viewing, and the fateful night is that of 22nd September. Four people gather at a garage building in the dead of night, and it becomes clear soon after that these four people are all guests who have been invited to the billionaire Lionel Lassiter's premise for the viewing. They have no idea what that night ahead holds for them, and from the looks of it, the four guests have never been introduced to each other before. Another noticeable feature about the group is that the members are all semi-celebrities, people who have tasted success or fame in some form or another in the past. Guy Landon is a famous novelist, while Randall Roth is a famous musician who is now struggling with his career to some extent. Charlotte is an astrophysicist, and while she is not famous like the others, she is seen as someone with a lot of potential in her field. The last member of this unusual ensemble is Targ Reinhard, a psychic of sorts. The only similarity between the diverse members of the group is that they all appeared in some late night talk radio shows. They are vaguely aware of billionaire Lionel Lassiter, but all of them are clueless about why they have been invited to the viewing or what the viewing is all about. As they are all standing and discussing the strange scenario, a van pulls up before them. It is being driven by a man named Hector, who advises them to hop on board in order to reach the billionaire's mansion. Lionel lives in a custom-made mansion called the Sandpiper House, and this is where all the guests are taken. The journey is rather uneventful, except that Hector asks them to listen to a radio emission, which is conveyed as one of the demands of the host Lionel. Meanwhile, we get the first glimpse of the carefree billionaire played by veteran actor Peter Weller. He relaxes in what looks like a living room in his luxurious psychedelic mansion, and he allows his assistant, a young woman named Dr. Zara, to inject him with some kind of drug. When the guests finally arrive, they are led to the living room and allowed to settle down in their comfortable couches. Much to their surprise, the guests find out that the host has arranged for their favorite things, which shows that the billionaire is well informed about all four of them individually. For instance, Randall is delighted to find Lap Sang Su Chong Ti exactly the way he likes it, and the host also seems to have arranged for a rare Tibetan menthol cigarette that he loves. Randall is also a bit concerned because he simply cannot figure out why the host might know such intricate details about his likes and dislikes. Besides, he has recently quit smoking and the rare cigarettes began to tempt him to give in. The others are also equally impressed by the arrangements for them, and this is when Lionel enters the room with a special bottle of vintage Japanese whiskey. The liquor has a lot of historic value as well because it survived the bombing during World War II. And everyone is offered a drink of this pristine whiskey. Lionel reveals that he wants all the guests to be on the same page before the viewing, and he insists that all of them taste the vintage liquor. As the party goes on, the conversations reveal more about why Lionel invited these four people particularly. The billionaire suggests that he admired all four in their impressive work in their respective fields and found them all to be quite unique. 
He was impressed by Guy Landon's literary skills, and he believes that an extraordinary experience might infuse life back into the once celebrated author. He claims to be a great admirer of Randall's music, and believes that the viewing would upgrade his music to a higher level. As for the astrophysicist Charlotte, Lionel seems to know quite a bit about her field of work, and he praises her profusely for her unique line of thoughts and accomplishments at such a young age. Lastly, he also seems to know a lot about Targ Reinhardt, and has immense faith in his exceptional sensory skills that allow him to perceive things from the world beyond. If the magical lighting and ambiance were not psychedelic enough, Lionel seems to have further arrangements for his guests. Next in line is one of the finest specimens of Peruvian cocaine fused with a blue-colored powder developed in a laboratory by Dr. Zara. There is also a blunt that gets passed around the guests, and Lionel does everything to ensure that all the guests are in a trance. The conversations also reveal that the billionaire takes great pride in his accomplishment as a collector. He shows off the uniqueness of the mansion and also some of his prized collections, such as the golden AK-47 hanging on the wall. Even the people working for him, such as Dr. Zaha, have a unique story. She used to be the personal physician for Colonel Gaddafi, and now Lionel suggests that she is the reason behind his healthy living and even his old age. He also lets us in on the secret behind his wealth. As it turns out, he made a fortune by stockpiling uranium, but how he got away with something illegal remains a mystery. Clearly, he is a man well-connected, and his only hobby now is collecting the most unique things on Earth. Now it is time for the big revelation of the night, the viewing that everybody was promised. Lionel leads them all into a secret chamber that he calls the Obelisk Room. The guests are stunned to find a strange giant meteorite in the middle of the room. The structure and formation of the rock-like substance is nothing that one can find on Earth, and Dr. Zara suggests that even the elements that make up the meteorite are not known ones from the periodic table. Lionel reveals that they tried to conduct tests on the meteorite, but it has proven to elude x-rays or even carbon dating. Even with all the resources at Lionel's disposal, he is unable to find a way to decipher the mystery behind the meteorite. And this has led him to invite the group of uniquely talented guests. All the guests are now high as a kite, but they are knocked back into the real world after viewing such an unearthly object. It looks like a fossil, but there is no way to find out what lies inside the meteorite. At this point, Randall lights up a cigarette, and Lionel immediately forbids him from smoking inside the obelisk room. Unfortunately, Randall seems to be too high and arrogant to care, and he blows a puff of smoke straight into the meteor. As the guests try to discuss the possibility behind the meteorite's origin, the object starts behaving rather strangely. They are shocked to find that the rock seems to be something lifelike, and it starts glowing and developing cracks all over the body. Previously, Targ had detected an uncanny force around the object, while some of the other guests ridiculed his thoughts. Now, it is revealed that he wasn't too wrong after all. The object breaks open and emerges an orange-yellowish blob-like creature with two elongated tentacles that keep growing to reach the ceiling. All the people in the room are caught in a trance, and the creature emits a high-pitched scream that is almost deafening. Everyone starts bleeding from their noses, and soon, we get to witness the true horrors that the creature is capable of. Targ becomes the first victim, and his face just melts away under the influence of the creature. Guy Larden is next to follow, and it is one of the most gruesome moments in the episode, as his entire head explodes, splattering blood and brains on the others. Even in such chaos, Dr. Zara seems to be fascinated by the creature, and she proceeds to go and touch the creature. Unfortunately, she meets with a similar fate as Targ, and even her face is shown to be melting away. Somehow, Charlotte and Randall manage to gather enough strength to break free from the trance, and they all rush outside of the room. The creature proceeds to prey upon the bewildered billionaire, and it combines itself with Lionel. The merger is one of the most terrifying things that you will ever see, 
and the new creature has features of Lionel and also the alien gooey monster. The tentacles are still visible, but the creature is now bipedal with somewhat of a humanoid structure. By now, Lionel's assistant Hector rushes in, realizing that something has gone very wrong. He grabs the golden AK-47 from the wall and proceeds to the room, only to find Lionel in a mutated alien form. As the creature walks towards him, Hector fires multiple rounds from the automatic weapon, but the bullets do nothing more than slowing down the creature briefly. In retaliation, the creature shoots a powerful electric blast that electrocutes Hector to his death. Meanwhile, Charlotte and Randall have made their way out of the building and they break into one of Lionel's super fast sports cars. Charlotte takes the wheel and drives at an insane speed to get away from the nightmare. You get the feeling momentarily that they all manage to escape, but soon the scene takes you to the creature who stumbles out of the mansion and heads into the nearby woods. After observing its reflection in a puddle, the creature lets out a painful shriek, but there is no way to tell if the screaming is from Lionel trapped inside or the creature itself. It then enters the city through a sewer network, and we see the true powers of the creature being revealed slowly. It impacts the electricity supply of the entire city, and the episode ends on this note, suggesting that this alien creature will now wreak havoc across human civilization. Moral of the story, curiosity kills the entire human race. The mystery behind the strange alien creature. The best thing about cosmic horror is that it is left up to the interpretation of the viewer. The creature that you see in this episode also follows the same construct, and we hardly get any backstory behind its origins. All that is revealed is that the initial fossil-like object probably came from space, and everybody was considering it to be a meteorite. As it turns out, the object was only a form or a shell or an egg protecting the creature inside. Something about the puff of smoke from one of the guests unleashes a chemical reaction that breaks the shell open and the creature is unveiled. Initially, it is no more than a gooey mass of flesh with a pair of tentacles that keep growing to a great length. Soon we witness the powers and abilities of the creature. It almost hypnotizes everybody in the room, and the high-pitched shrieks cause everyone to bleed from their noses. We also find out that the creature can manipulate objects even from a distance, and it is proven from the way that it melts a couple of the faces and makes one explode. Finally, it merges with Lionel, the person who chose the object to be a part of his collection. It becomes clear that fate is playing a twisted game on him, and now he is a collection item for the alien creature. After the merger, it looks as though a secondary consciousness of Lionel is present in the creature, and he is in shock and pain when he realizes his new form. The creature dealt with all those bullets fired at him, and it also displayed its ability to shoot powerful electric blasts that are enough to kill a human. Later, the creature also shows signs of manipulating electricity, and we see an entire city's electricity infrastructure in ruins as the creature walks in. Honestly, this episode had the potential to be a full-length feature film that people would probably watch in theaters. We would have loved to know the final fate of the creature and what happens to the city when it walks in. Do the humans have an answer to the extreme powers of this alien monster? Well, we leave it to you to be the judge of it. Did Lionel Lassiter know about the contents of the meteorite? This becomes a rather intriguing question, especially because of the behavior of Lionel and Dr. Zara. Even when they watch the creature reveal itself and two of their guests suffer gruesome deaths, they do not make any attempt to escape. In fact, Dr. Zara is intrigued by the sight of the creature and she even goes on to get a feel of the creature only to get her face melted. Is Lionel in shock or did he expect the creature to be inside the meteorite all along? We cannot rule out the possibility that the guests were simply summoned to trigger the creature to emerge from its shell and the billionaire was willing to sacrifice them all to add this creature to its collection. As luck would have it, Things went the other way, and the collector became the collected, just like Guillermo del Toro had suggested at the beginning of the episode. Even if the whole thing was Lionel's plan, he certainly did not intend to have himself merge with the alien monster.
Marvelous verdict. A creature feature to remember. The perfect creature flick requires a lot more than visual effects, and the viewing seems to have it all, from the gripping mysterious storytelling to the stunning special effects that go into the creature. The alien monster might remind you of the blob, but it is really a completely unique character. The acting performances, especially from Peter Weller, steal the show and we don't mind the open-ended climax that leaves a lot to your imagination. Overall, this is another successful episode from the Cabinet of Curiosities, which turns out to be comprised of more hits than misses. If you are a fan of creature horror, this is the episode you should dive into, and we can bet that you will not be disappointed. Let us know in the comments below what your thoughts on the alien creature were, and what its purpose was. Was it trapped on Earth and simply acted as a means of defense, or did it intend to be violent all along? Also, tell us your favorite episode from the series and feel free to check out some of our other works on this remarkable horror anthology.